Okay, I believe we're live. <laughs> this is great. This is a learning curve. Um, welcome everyone who is watching at this uh, time. My name is Juan Pablo Siles. Uh, I am the artistic director, uh, creative producer for Regiones. Um, Regiones is an annual performing arts series uh, that uh, aims to promote work created by artists with Latin American and Caribbean roots. Um, this year is our second installment, Regiones Central. Um, we're very excited about the program that we've created. Um, given the times, we've um, sort of pivoted to publish a magazine, doing these online artist talks, um, and very, very thrilled to have everyone join us, uh, especially the artists. So if you're watching, thank you for being in this space. Um, I'm going to very quickly show a trailer of the artist's work that we're um, in conversation with today. Um, so here is it. And I hope you enjoy. Far ahead of me. So I knew I had to run to catch up to her. Before I did, I looked down and could see that my shoelaces were untied. I was seven and my mom was taking me to the first amusement park that had ever come to Jamaica. So. I decided not to tie them. There are around 15 members featured in the Jamaican John Canoe. There's John Canoe, which is the leader, or the house head, or the houseboat figure. There's Astro Boy, Devil, Pitchy Patchy, Cowhead, Horsehead, Belly Woman, who's impregnated by the slave master, Wild Indian, which is a Western style, native with feather and a crown, Warrior, which is a Midwestern style from Texas. There's Queen, the Red Set Girls, Police Officer, Sailor, and Jack in the Green. Great. Um, so that's the work of Jody Lynn Kichal, Fazi Nearest Park, and Jonathan Gonzalez. Um, I also want to take a second to um, welcome and uh, thank our ASL interpreters, Antonio and Rachel, for being part of this event. Um, and now I'm going to introduce, I have the pleasure of introducing Charmaine Warren, who not only is a great and dear colleague, um, is one of the uh, founders of Dance on the Lawn. She actually is the founder, artistic director, creative producer, all of those big titles. Um, she also worked at BAM. She's a producer for Dance Africa there. And she recently launched an amazing artist talk called uh, Dance Black Story. So I encourage you all to check it out if you're watching. Um, these are great conversations. And without further ado, Charmaine, thank you for joining. Oh, thank you so much, Juan Pablo. Thank you all for joining us too. I am Charmaine Warren. I am a Jamaican. I am a non-disabled black woman. I live in Montclair, New Jersey with my husband, photographer and graphic artist, Tony Turner on the stolen land of the indigenous Lenape people. Our daughter, Ashe Turner, a black ballerina with locks is going into her junior year at Boston Conservatory. I have locks that are wrapped up in Jamaican colors. I'm wearing <laughs> earrings that are a mix of cowrie shell and Jamaican colors. And my top is also Jamaican colors. I'm so, oh, oh and I have the Jamaican flag behind me and books. I'm in a room that's filled with a lot of our, our family's memories T today and yesterday. I'm really excited to spend this time with my Caribbean comrades, Jody Lynn Kichau, Zwazi Mears Clark, and Jonathan Gonzalez. 
And now I'd like to pass it on to, let's say Jonathan, go first. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Charmaine. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you, Juan Pablo. Um, look forward to the context. Um, my name is Jonathan Gonzalez. My pronouns are they and them. I'm wearing a beige t-shirt that almost is close to a monochrome to my kind of sun-kissed, dark chocolate, happily summer skin tone, because it looks gray in the winter. Um, I have a kind of slightly picked out fro of medium size, um, almost proportional to my head, I'd say, almost a full circle. I'm sitting in a, a twilight kind of light, it looks like, in the living room. Um, and I use the pronouns they, them. I'm located on the stolen land of the Lenape and Canarsie peoples. I'm an artist, I'm Afro-Latinx. I'm born and raised in Queens and Flushing. Uh, I come from a large family, which I'm sure we'll talk about, um, that inspire a lot of the reasons that I make work. Um, I'm a choreographer, I'm a performer. Uh, I'm a farmer, I love the earth. Um, I'm trying to figure out what that means. That's part of this Caribbean uh, 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 in ancestral question. Um, that's enough. I'm happy to be here. Should I popcorn it? Popcorn it. Okay, let's go. Jody. Hi. Um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Charmaine. Thank you, Juan of Regiones. Thank you, Zoisi. And thank you, Jonathan. It's great to be in your company. Um, I'll start by saying, I'll say my name, Jody Linky Chow. I can say it in, it's more of a Chinese pronunciation or I could say it in a Jamaican pronunciation. Um, so Jody Linky Cho is how I think it is in Chinese. I'm trying to decolonize my name. Um, where do I start? I could say it in Jamaican, Jody Linky Chow. I could say it in American, Jody Um I am an interdisciplinary artist. I'm sitting in my living room studio workspace. I'm also wearing my Jamaican colors. You know, I got the yellow, a, a weird shade of green, but fluorescent in my black. So big up JA. Uh, I am, I would say one and a half, 1.5, um, generation immigrant from Jamaica. So I came here as a child, um, I was about 12 years old. And so I um, constantly draw my inspiration from the land in Jamaica and um, my, like the women in my family on my maternal and paternal sides. Also, um, I've just been really into, um, trying to discover or find out more about um, my heritage on both sides. And um, I love to sew, I love to tell stories, I love to tell jokes, I love to write, and I love to dance. So I guess that kind of sums it up with me for now, um, with intro, and yeah, I'll pass it on to Zoisi. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, great to be here with everyone. Uh, I'm in Germany right now in Dresdat, which nobody knows about because it's a tiny village with five supermarkets. Like literally the downtown is two blocks, smaller than New York blocks, um, but there's five supermarkets and two pharmacies. It's the strangest place, but there's a forest. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm a choreographer and dancer uh, based here near the forest where my mentors are. There are certain trees in the forest that I, I go to for wisdom um, now that I can have access to that. Uh, grew up in Jamaica until I was 12 and then so I'm bicultural and continuing to gather more culture the longer I stay in Germany. Um, but I would say for now, bicultural uh, with uh, after 12, finishing my childhood uh, in the US uh, and then hopping on a plane and ending up in, in Germany. Um, yeah, that, that's all I'll say for now, I think. Welcome my Caribbean people. 
Hello. <laughs> so, so listen, your home and wherever you think home is, home for me is Jamaica. If I wake up at home and it's afternoon, I would say hello a certain kind of way. How would you say hello to your peoples when you're around your peoples? Jody. What? <laughs> Jonathan. Hola. Swayze. Hugging. I don't know if I talk yet. I think I just hug. <laughs> the talking comes after. <laughs> like, Did you say Jonathan? Say that again. Yeah, I'm like, it's the afternoon. I'm obviously tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm never too tired for a hug. That doesn't exist in my life. <laughs> exactly. That's right. And we should let everybody know that it's what time, Zoezy, in your world? It is 8.15. PM. PM, PM, yes. And you just did what before you got online? I just cooked some rice and peas because we had a little get together before this meeting and we just talked about, I mean, we didn't just talk about food, but what stayed with me from the conversation was all of the Jamaican food that I miss so much. We also talked about seasoning, salt and pepper are not seasoning. No. Everybody needs to know that if you don't know that already. So I had to cook me some rice and peas because otherwise I don't think I would be here. I'd be back in the kitchen. <laughs> and, yeah, and speaking of preparing for now, when, when Pablo first talked to you about our gathering today, clearly I went all the way. But tell me about and tell us about your thinking when he said Caribbean. What? pumped you most of all for preparing for today let's start with you again let's start with you Zoezy this time <laughs> okay um I think whenever anybody brings up the Caribbean I think about the people um I think about I think especially having moved away like in the start of my teenagehood and having um, kind of stayed away uh, in terms of where I, I live after that. I, I, what I really miss, which I think is why I think about it, is the, just the love that is in the air, the friendliness, the openness that I, which I actually experienced. That's why I liked New York City a lot because it was similar enough that I can, yeah, you just can walk up to a person and, you feel like you've been friends for 20 years or you feel like this older woman is your mother because of the, the care and concern about you making mistakes or you know you trying to be your best self and them trying to help you get there with random people. And this is, yeah, it's like, it's something that, you know, for me, it's hard to say that, you know, I my parents grew me, but at the same time, the whole island, I feel like grew me at the same time um and who I've become so that that's what I think about it is 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 just that is just that uh aspect um that I grew up with in the culture thanks Razi Jody what what pumped you what triggered the you to talk about being or prepare for being here today um yeah I was really happy to be um to be to be present be presenting with this company of of fellow Caribbean folk and and to know um, about Zoisi also being being Jamaican American um, that um, hyphen identity you know um, it's 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 so familiar um, I. Uh, I also love the fact that um, yeah we're we're coming together and we're celebrating our family's roots. Um, even some of us are even though some of us have been you know born here or or raised here most of our lives. I think it's great to kind of have that connection again. So I'm excited about that and to Thanks. see where there's some parallels. Yeah. Thanks, Jody. Jonathan. Yeah, I think. Um... 
I'm thinking about coming from Dominican Republic, moving between two different colonized tongues, being raised in bilinguality. Um, and at least when I think about Caribbeanness as a topic, I think about it like just being a place of excess, like, and, you know, like not being able to catch everything, which I like. And also like something mystical in the undercurrent of trying to think back to what it means every time I'm there physically on the island and when I'm here in New York, which also feels like another kind of island. So let's let's riff off your line, Jonathan, a place of excess. And we talked about food and we're gonna get back to food. I'm just saying. But I feel, and I would love to hear what you all think about that line, a place of excess in Jamaica, in the DR versus here in the US and, and specifically the plate, there are specific places in the US because Brooklyn, for example, is little Jamaica, right? You go first, Jonathan, since we're using your line. Yeah, yeah. I think about, I think it was, I was talking to somebody yesterday, a friend of mine who is in um, PR actually, and they're normally living here in New York City. And so they went back um, to be with family. And they were saying, you know, just like the state of the world, which is on the table in this moment, you know, everyone's going through transformation um, and transformations that are happening beyond this plane and transformations happening inside of us. And, um, in the Caribbean entering hurricane season and just talking about the kinds of anxieties and all and, and being in PR. Um, and I think it's a trope, but it's also a beautiful power. And like what I feel connected to my family line is like the amount of laughter and partying and place for comfort in each otherness to make up for all the transformation. Um, and that happens there at the physical place, but it happens wherever we are. And um, that feels maybe like it, it, my thoughts, yeah. yeah. So I see you're shaking your head, go, go. My head in, in silence. Um, yeah, that maybe this, uh, yeah, this excess uh, and also, yeah, maybe think of this, like, like this laughter, this joy that you're talking about in this transformation process hurricane season, the poverty, like, I mean, it's, it's a very intense um, economical, cultural, just ancestral, it's a very intense place, uh, thinking about Jamaica and uh, especially thinking about the cultural difference of how my friends who are mostly European um, versus my family have dealt eat emotionally dealt with the the COVID situation like you have no idea my I have a WhatsApp family message uh family group and it's it's 90 percent jokes 90 percent jokes and they're so good <laughs> like I've I've like especially in the beginning when it was locked down I was crying from laughter more than I have in years because they just they just are so good at picking out the, the just perfect jokes for everyone. I was laughing so much and people, you know, I talked to my friends and they're sad, they're having a hard time. I was like, I am actually maybe laughing more than I have in the last year because my family is just hilarious. And I, it's such a skill set in a way that I, I, <laughs> I don't know, it's just my family, but I feel like it really is cultural that finding joy is never an issue <laughs> finding something to laugh about in the worst most tragic situation is is more than possible <laughs> and and this is i also find uh i would almost generalize it as caribbean because of my friends from puerto rico and dominican republic um and even from latin america that we that like i i share that with them that we joke about horrible situation that really are challenging for us but we we come out of it laughing and it's the most pleasurable thing that i experience in horrible situations or anxiety filled in situations as you said jonathan jody excess i don't know where to start with that one right. <laughs> yeah thanks jonathan <laughs> yes thank you I guess um, when I think of excess sometimes, um, especially with my people, 
humor is a big part of it, yes. Um, I think um, expression, there's so much, there's an excess of expression. There's so many different types of people. I mean, like people from all walks of life, you know, like the town and country girl, the, 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 the market woman, the country woman, you know, country lady. And, and I don't know, there's just so, there's an, ex, an excess amount of characters, a dreadlocks man walking down the street to the sophisticated guy, the architect guy. I mean, I can't go on. I think, I think a lot about, um, these characters, you know, and they're just in our existing in our everyday life yeah. in Jamaica and, and how there's so much humor and personality and individualism in that. Um, that's what I like. Uh, about. Do y'all do y'all have it in your families? I, I was gonna ask. <laughs> <Yes. your> <laughs> this is something I find excessive. I would really use this word which I love, but I almost think maybe it's too much, is that when my family gets together, all of us, most, yeah, almost everyone is speaking at the same time loudly, <laughs> making jokes at the same time. So there's laughter and people are laughing at different jokes because everybody's talking at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there's so much laughter. I feel like the building is gonna break <laughs> from the vibration. Like when I was a kid, it, like I felt like the air was vibrating from the laughter and the loudness. And like, it's almost too much joy for the building and the loudness for the building to handle. And I really was like worried about that when I was a child. And they're, they're always like that. So it's like safe. I almost thought like three family members is safe for the architecture anymore. <laughs> it's, it might, it might just break. It really like, my go Jonathan go yeah no I'm just remembering all the times when I figured out we were loud you know like I'm remembering like when the broom I grew up in an apartment building like when the broom would hit from underneath and I was like <laughs> no, or like when um like my grandma and my grandpa who are still married for a very long time they just scream at each other when they watch the Mets and the Yankees and it <laughs> if I had, I was probably five. I could remember being a five-year-old walking up the steps just to look at them and say like, I need to sleep now, you know? Like <laughs> just requesting it, but it's always love. It's always love, but it starts at a level that needs to like a higher octane, because I do think what you're saying, like what is cultural is a question, like that's what we're talking about here, but also what is like um, Western inflected that can't deal with grief or trauma and speak to it with a way that doesn't want to avoid conflict or raise tone or perhaps fall into love or like affect or high vibe or you know like cool or feel or feeling, prioritizing feeling, which that is something that I think uh, I feel very gifted and fortunate to have been form it, formed inside of. Yeah. Jody, the, the dinner table, I have a family member who act, non-family member who actually takes an aspirin after Thanksgiving dinner. Oh my gosh. Jody. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, are we talking about food? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We, we're already there. We're already minutes. there. But you, it's, the, it's the gathering. It's, it's bringing us together. Mm. The seasoning, yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, I come, like my mom loves, oh my God, Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's a big deal. Um, I mean, Christmas too, of course, Christmas more than Thanksgiving, mm, but yeah, absolutely. I come from a family that loves food, loves cooking. I mean, it's a big part of the family. I mean, when my mom has Christmas dinner, the whole, it's like the whole block come, you know? Um, yeah, the, the the my friends that I haven't seen since high, you know, some like longtime friends that I grew up with down there, they all come, you know, it's just, yeah, she's, my mom's a good cook, but yeah, it, um, the laughter part, I related to Zoisy when, when, when they mentioned that I actually, um, I had a, a, a memory the other day, someone, my cousin shared it to me on IG, a picture of all the kids 
in grandma's house sleepover, like not necessarily my family, but just a, 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 an image on Instagram talking about that. I just brought back so much memories. I started laughing, you know, cause it was like six of us, seven of us in one bed in grandmother, in my grandmother's <laughs> house in the countryside of Jamaica. Oh my gosh, there's no, that is the loudest. That was like the loudest, <laughs> you know? I asked you, you all this. I'm sorry if I cut you, Jody. It's okay. Yeah. I asked you all this earlier, but maybe you can expound on this for our guests. But do these people, do these characters, I hate calling our family member characters. However, <laughs> <laughs> do they materialize in your work? And then if they do, <laughs> Jonathan, and then if and when they do, when the person who is being created sits in the audience, what happens? Jody, try first, you go. Yeah. Um, well, I, I've been creating this body of work um, on picnics and um, most of these, uh, pieces are like inspired by my my grandmothers on both my mother's and father's side so um yeah i i i don't know what else to say about that but just maybe their act of caring and 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 compassion and 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 love of food and sharing and um yeah that's that's what I have to say for now. Um, Thanks. Jonathan? Yeah, I don't think, I, I, I feel like I've had the privilege to work in some artist work. I'm thinking about Cynthia Oliver, where like there's mm -hmm. like the opportunity to really feel the presence of a person and to meet them sometimes. And I'm like, I played you, or I got to think of you. Like you were a source of inspiration for me. But when I'm making work, I feel like um, I heard this from someone else and I'm going, I can't remember who it is and I'm going to snatch it and, I, and I'm sending you graces for the conversation. But I always think of myself and my family as quite haunted people. Like, and that feels very Caribbean too. Like we are like not haunted like hexed, but haunted as if like we carry with us, I think a long line of magic and witches and people who have a certain level of attention to that space. And when I make, I feel like there's other things in the room with me. And that feels like my family, but it doesn't feel like a person. You know, it doesn't feel like perhaps a member of my family that I can name, but it does feel like a presence. And that part feels like the spiritual lineage that runs through everything I've made. So it's not an endeavor, it's just like a happenstance. Yeah. Thanks, Jonathan. Sassy. Yeah, <laughs> before it's a bit, I, yeah, I think it comes into my approach, maybe, and and also how I want to represent myself as a, a person artistically and professionally uh, as an artist, so to speak. So actually, now that you said it again, my, my thought was like, ah, oh, and then based on what we just said, I was like, oh, how does it come into my, like, world as an artist? And I was like, actually, it's me as an audience member, for example. Like, I laugh. I mean, in Germany, because of the culture, it's not really like a laugh out loud kind of situation. And when I go to the theater, I represent. <laughs> like, I, I feel, I, first, yeah, I fill the room with laughter because a lot of how I process things ends up in going laugh, like grief ends up in laugh, like, loss ends up in laughter sadness ends up in laughter so eventually i know i'm gonna get there no matter what emotion i'm going through yeah. so when i see a work and process it even if it's like heart like heart wrenching or touching or touching my soul i'm it, it always moves into the laughter so most of the time when i go to the theater i i'm trying i'm not trying to do this but i feel like i'm shaking the walls because so much is like the more i like the work the louder i am and um, yeah, happily, a lot of my colleagues really like that because feedback is given because usually the audience is, the culture is like very silent and not showing respect for the work and the artist and what they're doing. But 
I'm I'm just reacting to what I'm experiencing and um, is loud. Securing the architecture though, right? This is the Secure, I'm, only this is the I'm only one, I'm only one. I'm only one. So it's Versus safe. the big family, right? Oh my, it, it's not safe. I really, <laughs> like I've really thought about this my whole life and I really feel like I felt unsafe. Like I was like, you know, should we put, you know what we do in the in the hurricane season, like when the hurricane is coming or even a mild storm or something, you will put tape on the windows and take yeah. off the glass. I don't think, you know, you prepare. I feel like I need to do that for the concrete wall. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that powerful. I feel like I don't try to underestimate the power of the voice and the body and the vibration that you can create with that, you know? <laughs> Um, I don't know if I should ask you to go first because you might want to think about this, but power, vibration, spirituality, generation, we carry so much. And I think I want to highlight this question with cultural ability. And I don't even know if it's a question, but all of those things, put them in the soup, mix it up, but spirituality, cultural visibility, the family, the architecture, the seasoning. What does that mean to you? And how do you bring that forward? Or do you? Let's start with Jody. as your eyebrows wrinkle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're muted. Cultural, cultural visibility. Um, absolutely. Um, I, 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 I try to be loud with it visually and, um, and, and also physically, you know, um, whenever possible. Um, and it doesn't matter the space I'm in. Um, I, I love, I love color and vibrancy. And so I, I think a lot about, about how to be visually um, present, especially that, you know, um, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> you talked earlier about costumes and how you, you make your own costumes. Yeah. It reflects you, it reflects Jamaica. Absolutely. There's so much, so much pattern and, and vibrancy and, um, and I, and, I don't know. Just, just. Um, I think. I think the materials are are super important to help me be as loud as possible and as vibrant and visible as possible. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like people, as a foreigner too, people are, for the most part, they might look and ask the constant question, "Oh, where are you from?" Oh, you know, and they have like a certain expectation too when they look at someone like me, you know, I've gotten this before, but you don't look black if you're from Jamaica, you don't look black, you know, I mean, like, anyway, so, but black, you know, there are different shades of black and there are different cultures of black. And 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 um, I am choosing to be this, um, to be extremely visual with this identity and, um, and even like going back on traditions and, and what, the identities look like back then and and actually making it even more hybrid now bringing it into this American space bring this custom this tradition into this American space like what does that look like and so I keep like adding layers and layers of, of visuals and and stories and vocabularies into my mix of things so um, that's how I'm choosing to be loud and visible um, people are going to look anyway, and they're going to ask anyway. So I'm shouting it to them like this. Ashe. So <laughs> do you want to go next? No. Uh, sure. I mean, I was just thinking that uh, I think what, what I do, I think I, what I do is a little bit different of a strategy. I think because my accent is so strong from like now in terms of having a US uh, sounding voice, so to speak, or accent, uh, that usually when people are like, oh, they, they don't ask in Germany anymore, like, where are you from? Cause yeah, they just don't. <laughs> um, but 
they're like, oh, you're from, you're from the US, right? And I'm like, no, I'm from Japan. <laughs> like I, I usually lie to strangers because I, oh. I love this disruption. It's, it's just like, you know, like, oh, I know the box. You don't need to tell me. And I'm like, do you know the box? <laughs> you know, can you ever assume the box? Because of course, like nobody assumes that I grew up in Jamaica, you know, just because of my accent uh, now, how it sounds now. Um, and so because that, that disruption isn't immediately visible, uh, also hearable, that I, I usually just dis do the same thing instead of telling my story, which I used to do uh, a few years ago. Now I just make a joke out of it for myself. <laughs> like basically I make it fun for myself. I'm like, no, today I feel Australian actually. <laughs> like, you know, there was once I told this half an hour long life story that I just made up about like how I've traveled all the world. like. <laughs> as a childhood why like how my accent became what it is they're like yeah what happened to my passports what passports I had to give up to gain this sort of citizenship I just made this crazy story and it was so fun and this person was like wow I would have never known and I was like I know you thought I was just someone from the U.S. you know <laughs> anyway so that I I just I just thought of that um yeah, I think. Yeah, I think vis the the visibility strategies that I use is just is just calling myself a Jamaican artist. Uh, let's say in my bio, I don't think I, I don't think I like say it, <laughs> um, or I'm not usually in so many conversations where that's an opportunity. But I definitely say it uh, in my bio. Um, that I'm Jamaican artist, I'm, I live in Germany, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then for me, it's like everything I do reflects back on that. Um, yeah, but I, I don't think I, yeah, I guess it's more like I don't, I don't need to do anything special kind of. I just feel like I am a Jamaican artist and everything I do is a part of that definition so to speak i'm i'm everything i do is um giving more information or complication to what jamaicans are doing in the world and i think that came from coming to the us as a teenager and the only pieces of information that i was um yeah given from the outside is like oh you like bob marley and you smoke you must have marijuana like you must have some weed, you know, those are, it's like, you must love reggae, but not even reggae, Bob Marley, because <laughs> there's no other reggae artist in the entire world, in the entire history of reggae, apparently. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was not in New York as yet. So these people were incredibly ignorant. Um, yeah, and then I must smoke marijuana as like a 13 year old. Um, and I must have access to that somehow having recently immigrated and I'm underage, and I'm like so shy, it's not even funny. Um, but yeah, that's what everybody knew about me immediately, uh, especially with the accent that I had at the time. So I was very like, audit based on how I sound like, yeah, everyone's like, oh, you're Jamaican. Um, that's great, that's yeah. great. So I think it's like, all right, like I would like to make some new definitions in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like for other people for other people by the way there's something else and also for for myself thinking back as a kid in Jamaica and wanting I, I think it would have been great to know the range of what Jamaicans um and also I have to say people from the Caribbean in general because I feel very connected I mean like some of my family's in Trinidad, some of my family's in Barbados, mm -hmm. Antigua, la la We're around. Um, also some of my family's in Cuba, like we're around. So I think having uh, examples in Europe or in Japan or Australia or wherever, just like outside beyond Bob Marley <laughs> um, that have like, you know, gained international awareness. Um, I want yeah. to come back to, to new important. definitions in a second. 
But Jonathan, do you want to talk about cultural vis visibility of culture and all of those other things too? Let's do it. Let's get into it. Um, <laughs> into yes. The visibility. Um, yeah, no, I think affirming what I've heard, like I feel like being Afro Dominican, which is like a very contested space just historically on that island, <laughs> which is um, in Spanish, we say, um, and I'll, it's it's close to the line is what is it in English, but it, um, in Spanish, cerca de la línea, which it means close to the borderline, which is important in the kind of cultural space of DR, because when you're close to the line, you're close to Haiti, and that means that your people are most likely people of migratory patterns for work that move back and forth across the river. And um, so, you know, like down to who I am when I show up in the room and to being Dominican and not being um, you know, typically whiter, which there is a, a strong presence of people who occupy, um, who have that heritage to um, the West that shows up phenotypically, you know, um, who get the stage for a lot of things artistically. Um, that feels important. Being a queer non-binary person and being Dominican is important. Um, and I feel like that space is good to hold out loud. Um, and then, you know, other than that, it's like just, as Wazi said it really well, like making the work, um, it's kind of just, again, in the work, you know, like you all showed the clip and I was just like, I always have so much damn light in my piece. And all that light is like all of the lights I'm used to, you know, just like, and so I always am like, put more in, put more. <laughs> but, um, and it has a reason, but also sometimes it doesn't. And that's also true too. So a prioritizing feeling again, yeah. <laughs> what do you all do when you're making your soup? Figuratively and literally. Oh, it's like time. What spices? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's like, like pepper, Jonathan is saying. Uh, Go ahead, Saucy. Oh, that that that's my answer. Pepper and time. That's the base. Yeah. So build up from there. Scotch bonnet also. Black pepper and Scotch bonnet. Those two types of pepper, plus time. That's the base. Yeah. And then we're coming back to the stage soup. But hold on to that. <laughs> right, right, right. No, no. Coming back to that, though. Jody, when you're making your soup. Ah, uh, it's, it's so funny. I was just um, having dinner with one of my closest friends the other night, um, Saturday night. And um, she reflected on how when I made a salad the other day and brought it to the beach, she's like, don't you use any salt, girl? I'm like, I, I don't know. Um, I tend to be on the bland side of things with when I cook, to be honest. I just want the flavor of the veggies. Um, I'm a pesca vegetarian, but I don't eat shellfish. And anyway, I recently incorporated pepper into my food because I grew up not liking pepper. It was just too intense for me. Um, but I love sugar. <laughs> Give me some rum or sugar cane or something. <laughs> Yeah, I'm more of a sweet person, not a spicy person. <laughs> yeah, I'm both, but I feel you on both and like I'm salty, sure. spicy, pepper, pepper oils. Mm. Bring it. I love Jonathan. Yeah, no, I'm I will go all the way to the end. Like I'll eat the sugar cane. We have like dulce blocks and I just cut a piece off as a child, but I love it as spicy as possible. So it's like I'm just like always mm. excited. Always yes. find the edges. I'm like always going too far. If a soup, I'm a I'm a number one. Let let it be a full day like process. I'm like, put one thing in. I want it to simmer for an hour. Put another mm. thing, simmer for an hour. I love to watch a slow process go and let a pot sit. That means we're coming to your house, Jonathan. I'm just saying. <laughs> it smells so good by the end of the day so right okay you can't hang up yet you can't go on mute yet jonathan so your soup on stage too much light no not too much light bring more light what huh what do you put in the pot um yeah exactly actually it's very much like my soup i'm just like okay we're about to start a piece let's we're going to be together for two years welcome to this marriage and it's like you know 14 people in a room, most of the time people who have already been drinking wine together for a long time, <laughs> who are willing to, you know, like be like, we've been arguing about the same thing. Let's go and try to make something about this. Um, and normally the arguments ensue still, 
and it's like a lot of fervor and I love it. And I love that a lot. Um, so those are like the physical ing ingredients of minds. I love collaborative making. And then also um, lots of different levels of like play. Like I, I come out of music as my training um, as a vocalist and um, instrumentalist. And so I, I very much start with um, sound in a lot of ways, but I'm, I'm deeply, uh, deeply written by dance, like just in my household. I come from a family of bachateros, so people who make bachata music, and my mother, like active house dancer in the scene. And I just have like so many VHS S tapes of being a baby eating my shoe under a party in the living room. So like, and watching them all the time, like wanting to have been 10 years old and not, you know, like five months there. So like, and um, so that also feels important too. Um, and conceptually, it's like a layering process. Yeah, very much like the soup. Like I love, I love the process of being in conversation with people. I love mystery of starting something that I have no idea what it's going to finally look like. Um, I like the kind of queer assemblage of just like throwing things together and, and hoping that logic happens and not being wrapped up with kind of like white ideals of legibility. So super um, like filled when I see black people, BIPOC people, people from the Caribbean, like uh -huh. um, refuse to be clear in the ways that they're representing themselves in spaces and how that artwork is like, that kind of method is also a, a form of resistance. So when I make things, I normally end up feeling like if it's not too much, then I'm not actually invested. Um, and that happens through text and through song and through embodiment and, and through the absence. There's a lot of pieces I make that have darkness and no bodies. So um, sometimes they're sculptural. And so keeping myself guessing too with what I'm making, like I have been very fugitive to my relationship to making art too. I'm like, I'm gonna make a dance. Next, I'm gonna make a sculpture. Next, I'm gonna disappear for a year. And like keeping myself also guessing about why I make a thing feels important too. So I can refuse some levels of the market. Um, yes. Nice. I see you're, you're soup on stage. My soup on stage uh, is in the dark. <laughs> I was like kind of laughing to myself like you're like- You need to that. talk to Jonathan some more. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm into the darkness, no light. I mean, this worked to get a pitch black room. I have to say, I have not perfected the, the ease and the ease of it. Yeah, but- um, yeah, I'm. I, yeah, actually, I'll I'll continue that. Like, I I'm uh, I'm into the darkness because I'm into the disruption of the hierarchy of the senses, and I think I, I actually the the clip that that uh, was shown at the beginning was from my first professional work, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is like, and and the the intention of that work was to share with the Berlin audience. Um, I mean, it toured later, uh, but initially just the Berlin audience, a mostly European audience or culturally European audience. The This experience that I grew up with Jamaica of like random people caring for you as if they're like, as if you are their child. And that was the experience that I wanted to construct basically. Um, and, and the story that I was sharing about going to the amusement park, uh, tripping, falling down because I were like, I was like, ugh, I'm not gonna tie my shoelaces. I'm just gonna keep on running to this amusement park because it's the first time in my whole life, and I'm like eight years old, and I'm, I've known about amusement parks since I was four. Like, you know, I'm late. Um, yeah, and then this random woman, I I fell, and before I could like proceed to cry out and you know be extra to get my mom to come back and notice me this woman picked me up and I was so I wasn't so terrified but I was just shocked I'm like who are you lady and why, why who are you actually and it was so comfortable and she just rocked me and I felt I didn't cry because I felt really soothed and I had no idea who the freak this lady was um, but I felt really comfortable and I didn't, I didn't need to cry because I was like, I don't know, I was swaying back and forth and she held me really well. So I felt really comfortable and feel like taking a nap in her arms. Eventually she put me down when my mom came and they started talking, of course, for like 30 more minutes. <laughs> um, 
but I but I think in in my soup, it's since that piece, it's it's all about this care. Like every work is very political. I'm very much motivated by by politics for sure. Uh, like anti-racist work is anti-racist work is at the center. Cross racial cross racial communication is my goal and interest and curiosity. Um, yeah, with like queerness all up in there. Actually, I'm wearing a t-shirt that is a joke that I made in rehearsal. Um, I, I don't know why I said it, but in rehearsal, I made a joke of like queer tendencies all day, every day. Um, and then the people that I worked with for, as a present uh, made me this t-shirt that has queer tendencies on the front and then the back says all day, every day. Uh, which I- You should make money from that. Come on. I, about that. I was like, it's funny because I actually forgot this joke and then when I got the t-shirt as a present I was like I was like oh my god that's so funny who said that and they were like you and I was like <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh my god that's so funny <laughs> like I love it actually like I love myself and my own jokes is that awkward I don't know <laughs> let's hear from Jody on on what's on your soup on stage What's on my soup on stage? Oh my gosh. Um, um, maybe let's start with, uh, with, with, with memory. Um, uh, I wanna talk about, um, from, I, I don't know, like just um, memory of my ancestors, that kind of memory stirring some of that up with um, our everyday materials, you know, um, knickknacks, kitschy items, like cheap stuff from the 99 cent store or what you would call in Jamaica, the China shops. Um, and uh, stirring that up with some um, American politics and stirring that up with some, um, I don't know, what's the recent, what's the most, what's the recent dance move? Okay, I put that in. <laughs> um, Are you checking TikTok? <laughs> I, I, believe it or not, I'm That's not on TikTok. At. The not most yet. contemporary, contemporary dances on TikTok. Uh, yeah. Or video games also. I need to get on the program, yeah. <laughs> get on the video games on TikTok, I tell yeah. you. Talk to any 10 year old or 11 year old, <laughs> they know the most current dance moves that age group yeah. right there. Yeah. Um, also, wait, looking at fashion is a big mm. thing. Um, yeah, I have, I have um, some, some fashion runway um, apps on my phone. And at night, I look at them and I just like, ah, like dream about them. Um, so I think a lot about, I, yeah, I think a lot about the visuals too, as I said before, and um, yeah, memories and stories from the past. And um, yeah, throwing in some American politics and I don't know, that's what, that's, what that, that's what you got, you know? That's what I got. I wanna say to our audience that we started a little bit late, so we're gonna go maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes later. And this is unfair to ask y'all, but it came up, so I think I should, and then, if you all would like to drop some questions into the chat, we'd love to try to respond, ask the artists, the beautiful artists here, to try to respond to them. But this came up, y'all, decolonization and renaming. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Decolonization. Go, go, Jody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. On that note, yeah, decolonization is like the big um political story these days where do we start with that where do we um what do what do we um how do we educate ourselves from this point like i was actually um watching a a, a, a talk ye yesterday from university of west indies they were talking about these statues and decolonizing in the caribbean and um and, I, and it's so relevant, obviously, to what's going on today here, too, with statues of Columbus and all these figures. And so um, 
I think I wrote her name down. It was Dr. Petrina Dakers from Edna Manley. She was talking about how can we how can we decolonize um, starting with these these monuments? How do we respond? And she was like mentioning like we need to give opportunities to artists to respond to these monuments that are currently up. Maybe taking them down all the way is not the way to move forward, but to um, you know, have some conversation with them. And so we meet in the middle and um, not, you know what I mean? We can't throw away the past, but if we have these reminders and we have new reminders to build on top of those, that's how, the only way we can um, reckon with the situation and then move forward. Um, so I, I've been thinking a lot about that, you know, um, the current space we're in to do that too. Jonathan? Yeah, I mentioned in the introduction that um, part of the work that I, my life work um, is also like um, becoming more engaged with agriculture as of recent in the last about three years. And that's been like working primarily with um, BIPOC people who work in land, um, non-white spaces that are agriculture led that are um, putting that language at the center of using ancestral practices to heal the earth from industrial agriculture. Um, spaces like Soul Fire Farm, which is, has a lot of overlap with the dance community um, in New York, located in Grafton, New York, a place like Silver Aqua Farms, just Farm School NYC, Karen Washington, just putting people's names out there that have been doing that work. Um, and I feel very generous to have been able to do this in my lifetime at this moment where we're in right now. Like I feel that, like I'm sure every, you know, age, generation, there, is, there are these phenomenons, but to be like at what feels like a pandemic and the end of capitalism and a, and it's not so ficti fictitious now to say like what is the end of the world look like you know um and that is like there's been so many ends of the world so i also know it's not that you know like i'm like i i take a deep inhale from my ancestors too knowing that they have looked into the world of the unknown and have been brave and continued and um that is also the work for myself um i'm I, I'm practicing more and more each day by working in the land, understanding how much clarity there is when you see something grow and when you see something live and how much clarity there is when you don't. And um, taking really clear precautions about um, desiring like reparations in a very real way. And my artistic practice as of COVID has been um, trying to get people in New York City those things by you know using art as a method to be able to funnel and redistribute wealth from um, white people with privilege to um, BIPOC communities, specific to Black trans communities, sometimes um, housing people, helping people get housing. And I think that's like my way that my art practice is embedded right now in that. And I work with a place called People Space, located in Lower East Side, that I'm part of a facilitator making that happen and using the art network to make that happen. But in terms of the conceptual ask of decolonization and thinking about the Caribbean and thinking about the island that I descend from, I feel like it is a time for me to draw very hard lines in the sand about um, the end of uh, the kinds of colonialism of the mind and of the spirit that have been written about so well in like the names of, you know, in France Fanon and like in the people who come out of the Caribbean and have, have developed this thought for us and we continue to add on to. And reparations I said is part of that, like more than the land acknowledgement, like the retrieval of land, the returning of land, the demanding of changes of power you know, the real um, financial and holistic shift, um, which I don't have language to get there, but in my art practice, I notice most of the time when I have circumstances and um, creative processes that bring me to the edge of myself, it's because I'm finding that language for the first time. And I don't know it logically until years later. Um, so I feel very like in kinship with this moment. Yeah. Ashe, thanks, Jonathan. Sazi? Yeah, my first thought was in terms of decolonization, which I'm very busy with. <laughs> um, I think that has very much shifted. I mean, I think that word, I mean, I knew through university, of course, that that specific word, but I think I've been busy with it from just being born in Jamaica, to be honest. <laughs> like everyone's busy with it, whether they use that word or not, that's just like, 
what people do, I feel like. Um, and for me, I've definitely gone through a process of what that means, like with who I am, black, trans, queer, Jamaican person in Germany, uh, a European like neo-colonial power um, and making art here and the, and living here and benefiting from the wealth that they stole. Um, it's, it's, it's taking me time to, to adjust to this new context and what that means locally. Um, because I feel like my, my process and knowledge that has been gained through living in Jamaica and living in the US is not completely transferable to this context. Yeah. Um, so I think for me that the decolonization practice uh, after the adjust, adjustment period, let's call it, um, I've gone into the starting place of honoring, honoring, honoring the cult, uh, honoring uh, my culture as a Jamaican, honoring everyone that raised me, including the strangers, uh, honoring the wisdom of of my ancestors, both human and non, as I said, like, yeah, like now I live by a forest and my mentors are certain trees in that forest because, and like, I really connect to you, Jonathan, of like really connecting to land has been a really great teacher for me because when I go this, there's a specific tree who's like the, the, the elder for me, um, who like, <laughs> has held me while I've cried so many days. It's not even funny because um, it's like such a strong tree and like, it's it's beautiful. I would love to take you all there, uh, but there's no internet access. So um, yeah, but seeing how when we had a thunderstorm and one of its trees broke down and then all of a sudden out of this like broken tree branch, there were like little new leaves coming about. I'm just like, wow, this, knowledge of resilience has come both from my ancestry as like human ancestry as well as non-human as well as plant ancestry and um and and that i find is is what i'm trying to that knowledge is what i'm trying to create a perspective or like a goggles to look at everything that's happening right now um that actually all the information that we need to do a decolonization process um, is just uh, have a new lens on it. And I, I agree kind of with what Jody said of like erasing or, or destroying and removing is not necessarily the answer. That even makes me think of something that the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam did when they did a decolonization process. It's one of the biggest uh, state museums in, in the Netherlands tons of money and basically they're I mean they can say it differently but my opinion of what their decolonization meant is that the very few pieces like six pieces in their like, multi museum mansion thing um like anywhere there was a a black or or POC or indigenous figure in any of the paintings or sculptures or anything what they have they just deleted the sentences that referred to them. Of course, they were super racist before and they just they just deleted the sentences. So now it's basically the same description text of contextualizing the painting. And most of them are paintings, but now it just doesn't have the sentence that it like refers to the figure. And I remember fucking laughing in the museum because there's this painting where there's this beautiful um, black female presenting person and they're in this pool. I don't know. Um, and then a, uh, a white female presenting figure on the left looking as if um, she is about to bathe this black woman's feet. And you read this text and it's all about this, this the, white, the, white per the white person. And there's no text about the black person as the literal biggest, most central figure in that painting. And I'm like, what kind of thing? Like erasure is literally not the answer and makes no goddamn sense in this. But you know that apparently that's what the consultants recommended. I have no idea. But like, yeah, I think recontextualizing, um, like I, I don't think erasing the mistakes 
of like having these statues, for example, like a, a, that's a part of the history, I, I, I think working with it. Um, when I think about transformative justice, it's not about denying or trying to forget um, that something painful happened, but it's, it's working with it within the community and keeping yeah. everyone that was a part of that event, uh, which is something I'm personally interested, again, going back to like cross-racial communication, um, having everyone be a part of that, that was a part of that event, whether they were alive or not, doesn't matter, um, to, to look at it again and gain a new perspective and understanding through that conversation to happen. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily, maybe destruction is appropriate for some things and maybe, yeah, as, as you said, Jody, having an artist, like I could, I mean, I'm not a visual artist. I'm not so good with that. I'm really like body centric, <laughs> but I could imagine just like, what if you just got a whole bunch of people in the community and gave them jackhammers and then was like, you know, teenagers, you got a lot of angst, make some art with this. You know, that's your school homework is jackhammers with parental and, you know, Love supervisors, <laughs> of course. You know, and I like, want to stay with you for one, one minute because we have to yeah. wrap up, but I want to stay with you, Swazi, in, in this last question to ask, you talked about erasure and we talked about decolonization and renaming and, and finding what our one act is because that's what I felt like I was supposed to do as an artist. And Jonathan named many of them, but as, as the Caribbean, as a Caribbean person, is there something that you've reached out to that you can keep next to you and say these crazy pandemics are going on? Erasure might not be an answer. Teaching and helping to decolonize could be an answer. I'm using all the words that you all shared, but I wonder if there is a Caribbean thing that you go to, to keep the art going and to keep yourself, keep your back, your box strong, as my mother would say. <laughs> Why don't you start, Zazie? And then we'll go to Jody and, and Jonathan. And we're wrapping up, by the way. I, I, joy, I don't, I don't know, like this, this joy, not being afraid of it, not being the, afraid that that's the most important thing, like in a, in a, you know, with, again, with my family, like finding a way to laugh your ass off. And that's the priority more than being busy with the reading the news and social distancing and what fucked up shit Trump is doing. You're just scrolling through Instagram all day and finding jokes to send to your family members. And that's what you're doing kind of for the last month, <laughs> you know? Ashe, Ashe. Uh, How about you, Jody? That, that to me is, uh, is good. What's the Caribbean thing I go to? I wouldn't say it's a thing, I would say it's a person. Um, my, my mother, my mother, give me my backbone, you know? Even though she doesn't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I will never understand what you're doing. She thinks I'm nuts, um, but she loves me and she gives me the support that I need and um, and the reassurance and yeah. If I yeah, if I had to pick one thing or one entity, it's my mother. So um, yeah, and if my mom is not around, I have some Jamaican friends in the neighborhood and I go hang with them, and it's just that family, you know, the familiarity is the family is what it is. Jonathan? Uh, recently it's been, it's been my hips actually, which is funny because sometimes when I'm like, I cannot deal with this day, like I'm just like already like it's two o'clock and I'm over it. I'll just like put my headphones on and I'm just like isolating my hips for a long period of time, trying to have a, a dance practice, which is really me just dancing in my room for an hour and a half until I sweat and I'm like, you know, and just feeling also that, which is always said all the time and is just like actually true. And um, like how conjuring that activity just to feel yourself do something that you can imagine yourself in a room with a bunch of other people and people that you love doing it together and how filling that is, so yeah. Wow, do any of you have anything? And this is a sick question, but I'm asking it anyway. Anything coming up <laughs> that folks should know about? 
jerk chicken, curry oh. chicken, <laughs> festival, rondong, like <laughs> bus up shots from Trinidad, delicious, uh, Escovich fish, sorrel, corn yeah. milk porridge, peanut porridge. <laughs> Go ahead, Jody. Go ahead, Jonathan. <laughs> Jody, do you say Jody first? Me? I don't know. Go. Um, what's coming up? Oh, I'm um, currently, I guess, career-wise, what's coming up? Um, I'm I'm on Governor's Island for the next three months in a artist residency there, through. Um, through NADA, New Art Dealers Association. So I'm focusing on the visual parts of my practice, building up costumes and, and 2D, 3D works, uh, maybe some video work. I'm actually really inspired to dress up in one of my costumes and just roam around the island like, what? Like, <laughs> respond to the place, bring it. Like, that's what I want to do. Um, so I'm gonna do, try to do that the next three months. I don't know how it's going to manifest. I don't have a script, but I just wanna be completely free to roam around and dress up, you know, as my one of my Junkanoo um, characters, you know, which is, you know, white face with the big white house on top, um, and just respond the heck out of that place, you know. So. Nice. I don't that's what I want to do. That's um, I need a break. Also, I'd love to go to the beach again and um, just hang out. Um, I'm not planning to leave New York anytime soon, but the next time I go anywhere, I'm going to Jamaica. I need to go home. <laughs> so, nice. Jonathan? I'm going to Reese Beach on Sunday. That'll be cool. Um, get as much beach as I can before it disappears. Um, I guess creatively and professionally, I mentioned I'm at um, a place called 122 CC, which is in New York City, which is on 9th Street and 1st Avenue. And a group of artists are there running a mutual aid distribution center and helping um, people who are houseless transition into independent lives. With So we're doing fundraisers and we have teach-ins and very like kind of satellite roving outside programming with social distance formats. Um, which is kind of very underground and vigilante. So if you want to join, you could just come by. Yeah. yeah. What is the name of it? One, two, two, CC? Yes. Okay. Oh, I just want to mention, I misunderstood. I thought you meant thoughts that are coming up and not like <laughs> events that are coming up. That and like all the, like, yeah, my, my mind is going a bit into food. Uh, yeah. So, so that's why I answered the way I answered. <laughs> Maybe I've been in Germany too long and don't quite oh. understand. But we are. That's our comfort place, though. Come on. It's our comfort place. It so is. Juan Pablo is going to come back to give the official goodbye and to tell about what else is happening. But this, y'all, a good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I, I love hearing this talk it was just it's it warms my heart um i leave with this soup on stage idea i think it's so wonderful and i hope that when we can get back to an actual stage you all can share your ingredients and sort of collaborate together at some point because i think that's part of the reason why i was motivated to start something like this is i want to connect everyone else to everyone else and have more art be out there. So that would make me very happy if that happens in the future. Um, as far as things coming up with uh, Regiones, we have an artist talk tomorrow at two o'clock. Um, it's gonna be Claribel Ruiz from Dominican Love Haitians Movement, moderating a panel uh, in discussion with Tatiana Mejia, who is also in Germany, I believe Swazi knows very well. Um, and Val Janti, who is a Haitian artist that teaches it at Berkeley College of Music. She's in Boston. Um, very much looking forward to that. And also in the evening, we'll have Ali Rosa Salas in conversation with some great Puerto Rican artists. Um, it'll be wonderful if you can tune in. It's going to be live here. And if you want a copy of our magazine with the work of these wonderful artists, please try to stop by Maria Hernandez Park. I'll be there. It'll be a very socially distanced, safe 
gathering. Um, we'll have DJ Mickey Perez also there, you know, throwing some tunes. So if you want to go and dance and we're going to stream it via um, our Mixler channel. So you can just put on your headphones wherever you are, tune in. We have a live channel there. So make sure to uh, tune in. Hopefully we'll have good service. You know, it's just technology sometimes doesn't really help us. But anyway. Thank you again. This was wonderful. I, I really value your time. And um, yeah, let's keep talking. You know, that's, that's it. Thank you, Charmaine. Thank you for taking the time. This was wonderful. Thank you to our ASL interpreters as well. Um, yeah, and we're around. So come join us. All right, friends. Bye.